So you're interested in launching Rider's Workshop. Well, let me tell you, I've got your back today because I'm going to share with you all of my simple steps to help you launch a writing workshop in grades K through three. Stay tuned. Hey there, my name is Jen Kimbrell. I've been an educator now for starting my 27th year this coming school year. I have done a lot of different things. I've taught first grade, second grade, literacy coach, tech coach, consultant, as well as dyslexia interventionist. And this year I'm going to start a new journey as a special ed teacher. One of the things that I think so much about is how we help our students with their reading. And one of the most important things we can do, and I believe this with all my heart, is that writing facilitates reading. If you want your students to be good readers, teach them how to write. One of the things that I find has been the hardest for anyone that I've worked with over the years is writing workshop. If you think about TV, if someone is working in a magazine or a newspaper and they're trying to get out the issue, what do you notice? It's a lot of I hate to say it, chaos in a way, because everyone is like running around trying to meet their deadlines and get things out. And you can kind of think of writing workshop in that way at times, not always, but at times. And so we tend to think, oh, well, if our kids are running around the room and doing all this stuff that it could look bad on us as classroom management issues, but that's not the case. I'm going to show you all of my little tips and tricks throughout this video to help you get started. So step one is to get organized. There's several things that you have to think about when it comes to getting organized in your classroom. The first thing is your assessment notebook. You've got to have a way to assess your students. Now what I like to use for my assessment notebook is just a three ring binder like this and just one that's thick enough that you can put tabs in it for all of your kids. So you'd have a uh, tab for each student. Then you would put their anecdotal notes and what I call quick notes in their tab. What you're gonna do is you're going to have a schedule of when you're going to conference with each student. So you'll set that up to where you'll know what day of the week you're gonna work with each student for conferencing. That is in your assessment notebook. You're also going to do the same thing for share time. Sometimes, and typically I do this, is I'll have the same kids that I'm conferencing with. Those are the students that are going to share their work, and that's just because I know what they've been doing and maybe could guide them and how I want them to share for that day. Assessment notebook is so important. I also will put some plastic sheet protectors in here to have like the writing paper just so I have access to it and all of the materials that I need for writing workshop. So that's step number one is just getting organized with your assessment notebook. You also need to think about what about your student notebooks. For the student notebooks, I have a simple Duotang folder that looks similar to this. I like to have the pockets and the prongs, but you, it, you don't necessarily have to have the prongs, but I usually will put an ABC chart in there or whatever chart you're using. So if you're working with older kids, you would maybe do a blends chart or whatever resource they're using to help them with their writing. But I also, have something called offices. So what I do is I take two full file folders that look like this and I glue them together like so. But what I do with the offices is I use it to add resources. So every time I teach a new strategy, like how to use their ABC chart to sound out words, things like that, I will put that on their office. I'll have them glue it to their office. 
Now you can make it beforehand. I know we've done that in the past where we've made it beforehand and laminated, but I kind of like to do it as we go, just so that it's got all of the materials that they know how to use. And then once it's full, you can do it on front and back then I will laminate it. But some of the things that I'll put on there, I have some I can cards, like I can write a sentence about my picture. I can add details to my picture. I can write my color words. These, this is for kindergarten. I've got, actually have lessons for K through three, but this example is for kindergarten. Add labels to my drawings. I can write my letters and numbers correctly, stuff like that. These are just things that we put on their offices so they can use them when they're writing. That's how I set up my writing notebook. Also, the pockets or therefore their writing that they have that they're either working on or they're finished with. If it gets too full, then I have a separate file folder that we'll put their writing in and then we'll talk about a little bit later about how we do the portfolio. But you don't want to get it too full. You just want just a few writing pieces in here so that they'll have access to it. Also, we have the writing portfolio. So at the end of every unit, so the launching writing workshop is considered a unit of study. And at the end, they're going to choose their favorite piece to put in their writing portfolio. I do like a plastic tub with file folders inside. And then I put that somewhere in the room where administrators and things can see it so they can take a look at it. Also, the next step is I want to think about how I'm going to set up my classroom. The first thing that I'm going to do when I start a writing workshop lesson is I'm going to do a mini lesson. I want the students to come to the rug. I'll have maybe an easel set up or my whiteboard books, materials like chart paper, markers, colors, pencils, whatever I'm going to use to teach my lesson. I always have them at the carpet first, and then I usually have the writing paper at a writing center. I always have a writing center set up for the kids, and that's where I store all of our materials that we're gonna need for, for writing workshop. I don't allow students to have access to their writing notebooks at their desks, because I don't want them to get messed up. So usually I just put these in a basket and I'll call on my kids that I'm going to conference with first, so that by the time I'm ready to get to them to conference, they've got something hopefully on their paper that we can talk about. Typically, I'll pass the writing notebooks out. If they're older, like second grade, third grade, we might do it by desk so that there's a basket for their group area that they, maybe the group leader can pass them out. Just however you want to set that up. One of the things that I do that's really important when I'm setting up my classroom is I know that I'm going to come to them for my conferences. I have a rolling chair that I can roll around the room. I take a clipboard and some labels. I'll grab their quick notes, which let me show you what that looks like. I grab their quick notes and basically for each unit, I have it set up of things that they need to know for that particular unit. And as they master that skill, I'll check it off for them. This is something that I keep with me when I'm doing my conferencing. I have places where I can write and take anecdotal notes. I also have an anecdotal note section that I'll put on the back of my quick notes to have extra room to write but I always take the ones that I'm gonna be conferencing with, I'll put those on my clipboard and I will walk around to those students. That is a really good classroom management tip because when I'm with the kids, they tend to act better than if I called them to my desk to conference. So that's a really quick tip that I think has helped me over the years. The next thing is the pre-assessment. You want to start every launch, when you launch writing workshop, you always want to start with a pre-assessment before you do anything. I always start on the very first day of school. And the reason why I do that is because I want to know exactly where they're at. And if you've ever taught kindergarten, first, second grade, the difference between the beginning of the year and the end of the year with their writing is so amazing. And I just love to see what they did that very first day of school. So I always give the pre-assessment on the first day. You can use prompts. 
I typically don't use prompts for kindergarten just because I want to see if they can generate a topic on their own. That is one of their standards and so I want to know can you generate a topic to to draw or write about? Can you draw a picture? Can you label a picture? Can you write a sentence about what you've written? So those are the pre-assessment that I have and that would go into their portfolio. The next step is the mini lesson. There's four different types of mini lessons that I do. One is organization, the other is strategy, skills, and author's craft. Now with organization, you might think it's like organizing your writing, but it's not. It's more about organizing for a writing workshop. We think about what to do. Things like setting up your notebook properly, locating materials, knowing what to do when the teacher isn't available and they're in a conference, what do I do? How to turn and talk to your partner, how to use the ABC chart, things like that. Those are some organizational things that we will do mini lessons over. My mini lessons always follow the gradual release model, which is perfect for structured literacy. It's the I do, we do, you do model, and the share time at the end. The strategy lessons are the how to do. So things like how do I hold my pencil correctly? This is for kindergarten. How do I hold my pencil correctly? How can I attend letter formation? So with kindergarten, a lot of people think that it's too early to start writing workshop at the beginning of the year and they want to start in the middle, in the mid, like January, something like that. I go ahead and start it at the beginning, but I'm really focused a lot on just letter formation. I want to make sure that my kids are writing their letters correctly. I also want to make sure they're holding their pencil correctly. I typically do about three times a week with their handwriting and then a couple of days with just drawing pictures, labeling pictures, learning how to come up with ideas to write about. Those are the types of things that I'll do. It really depends on the kids, but you know, half of the time I'm going to do handwriting the other half of the time I'm going to do the drawing if you're teaching older kids things that you might do for strategies could be things like how to expand your message how to stick to a topic how to reread your writing how to rearrange your sentences to make them fit better in your story the third mini lesson is skills and that deals more with grammar and punctuation That is the what to do, but specifically what to do. How do you start your sentence with a capital letter, ending your sentence with a punctuation mark? How do you say words slowly to write them, like write CVC words? Those are the types of things I'm going to do with the skills mini lessons. And then, of course, the last one is craft, and that's how to write for an audience. And that is what good authors do. They write for an audience, and so we do a lot of reading Like for the first launch, we're going to read a lot of personal narratives because that is typically what students are going to be able to write about is themselves. And so we do a lot of reading of personal narratives and talk about how the author uses words to help in their writing. And so with author's craft, it could be things like certain words that they use, even how they illustrate books. I hope that helps you with launching your writing workshop. If you are interested and you want to know more information, I do have a launching writing workshop unit for grades K through three. So I have one for kindergarten, one for first, second, and third. And I'll link those down in the description. It is filled with all of my writing centers, ICANN cards, quick notes, writing paper, all the things that you're going to need to start your writing workshop. I hope that would help you in getting started off successfully in your classroom. If you like this video, be sure to like it and share it with a friend. Also, I'd love to hear what you think about launching writing workshop, or if you have any questions, let me know in the comments below. Also, be sure to hit that bell so that you're notified anytime I put a new video out, as well as hitting that subscribe button so that you are in the know. Thank you so much, and I hope you have a great week.